Welcome to Canadian Independent Media for August 27th. Here's Jack Etkin with the first story on GMOs and the media. Thanks, Ed. This is an important health story. Most of the food we eat contains GMOs. The main genetically engineered crops are soy, corn, canola, and sugar beets. And the Trudeau government has recently approved GMO potatoes and GMO salmon as well. And these are now being sold in Canada. The government and the media tell us they're safe. Dr. Thierry Vrain is a retired genetic engineer. He worked for Agriculture Canada for 30 years. He was a government spokesman for GMO foods. His job was to tell Canadians that GMOs are safe. But after he retired and became an organic gardener, Mr. Vrain began to see that something was wrong with GMOs. Dr. Vrain no longer supports GMO foods. He says the scientific literature is full of studies showing that GMO corn and GMO soya contain toxic proteins. There's a consensus of safety that government agencies are, are backing the technology and say it's safe. What is your response to that? There are studies uh, there are definitely hundreds of studies done on genetically engineered crops. There are very, very few studies done on the safety uh, of engineered uh, crops and food. And so far, they have either been done directly by the uh, manufacturer, by, by Monsanto and, and, and other uh, chemical corporations, or they have been done by academia, by academics, uh, with grants from the biotech industry. So, when the government spokesman for GMO safety changes his mind and says GMOs are not safe, why does our media tell us something else? In May of 2017, the Trudeau government voted to not label GMO foods in Canada. Mr. Trudeau says they don't have to be labeled because they are 100% safe. But here is a former government spokesman saying GMOs are not safe. There is clearly something very deeply wrong in our country, and we have got to fix it up if we want to protect our futures. And now back to Ed with the story on North Korea. Canada's media are placing a lot of blame on North Korea for the current tensions with the United States. American and South Korean firepower on display in a joint military drill. And U.S. supersonic bombers in the air over the Korean peninsula. Shows of strength in response to North Korea's latest launch. But there's more to the story. First, China and Russia have put forward a seemingly reasonable solution. The solution is that the United States and South Korea stop their nuclear-armed military exercises around North Korea, and North Korea will stop its nuclear and missile programs. But the U.S. has rejected that plan. China and North Korea proposed that North Korea should terminate its of its further development of nuclear weapons. In return, the United States should stop carrying out uh, threatening military maneuvers uh, with South Korea right on its border. Not an unreasonable proposal. It's simply dismissed. Actually, Obama dismissed it too. Uh, there are possible steps that could be taken to alleviate, which could be an extremely serious crisis. Also, North Korea may legitimately feel it needs to protect itself. During the Korean War, the United States destroyed North Korea. The United States Air Force destroyed every town and city in North Korea. My impression was that I am traveling on the moon uh, because uh, there was only devastation and in a very funny way, Every city was a collection of chimneys. I don't know why houses uh, collapsed and chimneys did not, but I saw thousands of chimneys and that, that was all. 
It has been reported that the U.S. Air Force used over a million bombs and 40 million gallons of napalm on North Korea. The Air Force believed they burned down and destroyed almost every town and village in North Korea, as well as blowing up some of the biggest dams in the world in order to drown people, flood farmland, destroy food crops, and cause starvation. We're always told that the United States is standing up for freedom and democracy and humanity, even as the lunatics who control the United States destroy nation after nation after nation. The list is long. Nicaragua, Haiti, El Salvador, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, the Congo, Somalia, Lebanon, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yugoslavia, and finally Syria. And when do we stop believing that the lies that our politicians and media keep telling us? In British Columbia, we're always told that the Liberal Party is good for the economy and the NDP is not good for the economy. We're told the Liberals will be responsible with our money because they are the party of business and capitalism. But, like many things we're told, this may not be true. The media makes a big deal of the surplus the Liberals left for the incoming NDP government. But Christy Clark had a surplus because she didn't care about homeless people dying on our streets, nor did she care about people suffering and dying because they can't get medical care, nor does she seem to care about the terrible shortage of housing across BC, or the lack of money for public schools, or the high cost of daycare, etc. These are the prices we've all paid for Christy Clark's budget surplus. And it gets worse. In 2001, when the Liberals came to power, British Columbia's provincial debt was just under $40 billion. Today, only 15 years later, our provincial debt has more than quadrupled to almost $190 billion. This is a financial disaster, and most people don't know it because the media chooses not to tell us, and the role of the media here is paramount. BC Hydro has contracted to buy about $60 billion worth of electricity over the next 30 or 40 years from corporate suppliers. This is $60 billion that we owe to corporate friends of the Liberal Party for overpriced electricity that we don't need. All of us are going to pay for that, and the end result may be the privatization of BC Hydro. We've also just found out that our public auto insurance company, ICBC, is on the verge of bankruptcy because the Liberals have taken so much money out of it and basically ruined it. So there may be economic headwinds to come in British Columbia. If this happens, and the media starts to blame the NDP, we should all remember who locked us in to this massive debt. Softwood lumber is big business. It's a disaster for the environment, but very profitable for corporate Canada. We're always told that in the softwood lumber fight with the United States, Canada is right and the Americans are wrong. But maybe the media and politicians are lying to us, and what they really support is the overcutting and destruction of our wonderful forests for corporate profit. We recently spoke to someone we consider an expert on the softwood lumber story. We think he said that the Americans are right. We Canadians do give our trees away for almost nothing. So the logging companies destroy our forests and undercut American prices. The American companies want this to stop, and they have a good case. He further said that Canadian politicians are encouraging the destruction of our forests. We are cutting far too much, and the corporations pay us almost nothing for the forests they cut down. This is what the Americans are complaining about. The solution is for Canada to reduce the amounts being cut and, change the, and charge the logging corporations more for this priceless resource that they are destroying. Remember, our politicians and media lie to us a lot. They may be lying about softwood lumber too.
My name is Ed Johnson, and on behalf of myself and Jack Gekin, thank you very much for watching this week's edition of Canadian Independent Media.